Hi, I'm Chef Frank, and today we're making fried long hot peppers. What are fried hot peppers? This is something that I grew up with. My grandmother used to make these all the time, and I remember specifically because when she would fry the hot peppers, you couldn't be in the house. It would basically choke you out, and it was like a, a pepper bomb went off in the house. I didn't eat these as a child, but as I got older and liked spicy food, I started eating them, and they are absolutely just amazingly delicious, and it's something that my wife would call a crave. Like, you get these and you crave them. They're so delicious. Uh, they're versatile, too. You can eat them just with bread and a little bit of the oil, because I use a fair amount of oil in these, and the oil gets that nice pepper flavor. I like to also scramble them with some eggs for breakfast in the morning. It's like a great pick-me-up in the morning. For our fried peppers today, we're using Italian long hots, and this is what I kind of grew up eating. These are spicy. These are definitely going to be spicy, and they're going to kind of have a lot of heat. And they're just long hot peppers or Italian long hots. You can find them in most supermarkets. I get these in my local supermarket. You can use other peppers for this. I've used Cuban L peppers which are not spicy. They're a little mild. Actually, they're very mild, but they still have a great flavor. I've done this uh, kind of technique with jalapenos, serranos. I've done it with poblano chilies. Uh, so whatever chili you kind of get your hands on, you could do this technique with. But this just happens to be a recipe or a technique that's near and dear to my heart, something I grew up with. Just the smell of this makes me think of family and my grandmother. This is what we're going to need for our fried hot peppers one and a half to two pounds of Italian long hot or Cuban L peppers, about eight cloves of garlic, salt, and about a half a cup of olive oil. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is clean our peppers. Now, whenever I do chilies or something spicy, I always get a pair of gloves. I buy these at my local restaurant supply store. I'll put a link to where to get them in the description. But I always have these on hand. You can probably get them at like your local pharmacy as well. And what I don't want in here is seeds. And not for the reason that most people think. So I cut the top off. I'm gonna save that top and cook it. Seeds do not make things spicy. What's actually spicy are the ribs, these ribs that hold the seeds in. So what I usually do is I tap out the seeds. I don't care if there's a few seeds in there. Uh, this is kind of wobbly, so I'm gonna get rid of it and then I cut them in half. So I'm doing a lot of this granny style in the air. Uh, I kind of just do it the same way my grandmother did it and my dad, you know? Uh, so I take out the seed ribs, and I don't mind if there's a few ribs in there. This is a little gross, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm cutting it into pieces that I usually think of, well, this, these two pieces fit on a small slice of bread, and that's normally what I think when I cut these slices, okay? Take the top off, that top's a little wobbly and weird. I take out the seeds, let's cut that off. Cut this in half. So I'm not really too worried about the look. I, I kinda just go with rustic. You can actually smell that these are spicy. Um, so we're gonna get our gas mess out. Um, the gloves will protect you from any um, of the compounds and peppers. Uh, I've seen people do these with no gloves, and for me it's just kind of uh, not good. I've gotten caught before if you touch your face or, or um, even if you just touch your lips, this will kind of burn you. So I, that's why I wear gloves. I have my pan on. It's on fairly high right now. Because when I say fry, I really want to fry these kind of hard. Uh, so they get a little brown on them. So here are my peppers. There's a few seeds in there. I'm not too worried about it. If you see them, just take them out. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my garlic. I'm just going to kind of cut this into big chunks. I'm not too particular about how the garlic is cut on this. I don't necessarily want it to burn. I try and cut them around the same size. Um, I always find that this is kind of, it definitely flavors the peppers but I just like getting a big chunk of garlic that I can put on my bread with the peppers, so I'm not too crazy about how it's cut. Good. There you go. And now we're ready to fry. Time to fry. I have everything I need close by. In the culinary world, we call that mise en place. I have oil, but I have a little extra just in case I need it. I get my pan really hot, smoking hot, ripping hot. Uh, I'll probably be at about 360, 370 degrees, 
and I add my oil, just the, the stuff that I want to start with. And while I add that to the pan, I can see that it's really not all that hot. Because uh, if I add it to the pan, it gets hot. You'll start to see it'll smoke a little. I don't mind a little bit of smoke. I'm not talking about a fire billowing smoke. What I'm talking about is I want these, this to be fairly hot. Uh, and I don't think I have enough oil, so I'm going to add a little more. So we're probably a little closer to three quarters of a cup. And you might think that that's a lot of oil, and it probably is. But what we like about this is that we can dip our bread into the oil. There's been times where all the peppers are gone and we save the oil because it's so delicious. You put a little salt in it, it's absolutely delicious. If you put these in the oil when the oil isn't hot enough, they steam. You wanna put them in the oil and hear the sizzle. I always tell my students, whenever I'm teaching how to cook, sauteing means sizzle. If you put it in and you hear hissing, that's steaming. So we're gonna give this a minute or two just to kind of get hot. Our oil is getting hot. I can smell the oil. You can also see that it's a little bit of a shimmer on top, and I'm gonna add my peppers, and I'm just gonna dump them all in, okay? You hear that? That's what I wanna hear. Sizzling, crackling. Leave the heat on high. I'm not gonna add my garlic yet, because if I add my garlic right now, it's going to get burnt. I always add my garlic halfway through. At this point, though, I am gonna add some salt, a fair amount of salt, and I'm gonna leave them alone. Leave them alone, don't touch. I spread them out in kind of a single layer as much as I can, and I leave them alone. I'm not gonna go too crazy with them. Leave them be, I want them to start to caramelize and get a little brown. We'll give them a flip once they get a little brown and get the stuff that's on top to go down below. At this point, it might start to get a little hot. You're having a little trouble breathing. Open a window, turn a vent on, I have my hood on, so I really want to kind of evacuate some of this air because there's been times where we've all had to leave the house. So be really careful. Make sure you have a vent on. Uh, you can do this outside too. I had thought about doing it outside, but it's way too noisy out in my backyard. The birds, the squirrels, they like to the chitter. This will also splatter a little. So be prepared to clean up splattered oil. The peppers have been in the pan for about three to four minutes. It's time for the first kind of flip. And I'm just gonna give it a good flip. And you can see, the stuff that was on the bottom comes to the top. I make sure to push those pieces down, the ones that uh, haven't been cooked. But you can see, like, I'm getting some nice browning there. And that's what I want. I want the peppers to get that nice kind of caramely brown color. Oh, it's going to be delicious. Time to add the garlic. I'm going to give these a little bit of a flip. You can see that beautiful caramelization there. Edge of garlic, I just sprinkle it in and around. I kind of nestle it down into the pan. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And then we're gonna let this go for another three to four minutes. So altogether the peppers take about seven to eight minutes, maybe even 10 from start to finish. And I think we're looking pretty good here. My garlic is starting to get a little brown. Uh, I don't mind if it's not super soft, but look at those peppers, okay? Uh, and that's done, I think. I think we're good to go. I'm gonna shut my power off. The peppers are wilted. The skins are kind of like wrinkly. We have some really, really nice browning caramelization. I'm gonna put these into a bowl, right into my bowl. Make sure you get all of that oil. So after we fry them, I put them in the bowl and they're ready to taste. So the way I like to eat these is you get a little piece of Italian bread, this is from, uh, we got this at the green market the other day. Make sure you get a little bit of oil and you put a pepper on there. Look at that. Get a piece of garlic, plop that on, give it a taste. So good. It takes me back to my Italian American roots. This is something that my grandmother make all the time. Something that's delicious. You should try them out. If you don't like spicy, get some Cubanelles, but otherwise they're absolutely delicious. Scramble them some eggs, put them on some bread, you can't go wrong. And that's my take on fried long hot peppers. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the little bell to get notifications when we have new videos. I love to read the comments. Leave your comments. I try and answer as many comments as I can. Um, I like to hear what people have to think about our videos and uh, people usually give some pretty good ideas as well. We now have merch. Look at this. 
Need Salt t-shirts, Teespring, the link is down below. I'll put a link in the description as well. The recipes will be in the description. We also have started a Patreon, at Proto Cooks. If you feel like supporting us so we can do more videos, hit me up on Patreon. I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks. Thanks for watching.